Hello everyone. Welcome to yoga on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, I hope you're all well wherever you are in the world. Morning, midday or evening. Autumn or spring. Um, what I was going to do today, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still not in the barn at Bonbo because um, we've had COVID at the retreat center and we're approaching, we're in the second week of our quarantine. <coughs> Everyone is well and there's no uh, real issues. Those who have it have had mildish symptoms and so on. Um, so here I am. Uh, but I'd be very interested, some of you wrote in about the difference between the solo session and the group session, so that's very helpful. If, if you have thoughts, if you prefer one or the other, um, I, I appreciate that. We're still working on a mic. We have a new mic, but we're still working on a mic that I can wear, which, could, which will work with the right kind of camera and the terrible internet we have here in the countryside, so we haven't resolved that yet. Um, uh, but what I'm going to do is a, a counter session to last, last week's session. And if you don't have these, if you don't have the link to all the saved content, to all the saved past classes since March, uh, let me know. But if you're on our mailing or the mailing of the retreat center, you should have received the link by now. So today I'm going to, what I want to do is have a look at <clears throat> Last time we looked at the relationship of foot, leg, pelvis, spine, mostly, um, while we continued the big theme of flexing and extending the spine and opening the imagination to have head and tails and always coming back to working with the sense of weight, the proprioceptive sense of my weight, proprioception perception of myself, which goes with interoception, capacity to feel my inner, my inner space, my inner movement, densities, relationships. Very different from exteroception, which is placing myself in the space and noticing the distance of things and so on. They work very well together. What happens though when we come to move is that very often we've been in this very visual, verbal world and on our screens, and so we come to move and then we're looking at ourselves and, and that quickly creates tension and a kind of a performance thing. And what's wonderful about a movement practice like yoga or continuum work or Feldenkrais or gardening or carrot chopping or high speed crochet, any one of these or dog walking, any one of these um, or husband walking, any one of these things um, can gently and very quickly bring us away from looking, which is a good thing. But when we look at ourselves all the time and we look at ourselves moving, we, we're not, it's not a help. Uh, and it brings us away from all of that to being near, nearness, just to being near, to being near to self, with self, at peace, at ease. And then that's wonderful because then we bring it back out into the world. So today we're going to look at the relationship of hand to arm to shoulder to spine. And uh, so let's just begin. If you just put your hands together, you can be kneeling or standing uh, or sitting on a chair. Now I know at least two of you on the list who are present today have shoulder problems. So don't, don't push and don't, there's no need to be frightened. You just listen to the sensations and stop, stop well before you feel uncomfortable. But we're just going to, we're gonna to touch, touching hands. We're gonna close the eyes. And we're going to rub the hands and feel and we're going to, with our eyes closed, be with a sense of weight. So something out here in the periphery is happening and something deep inside, as I sense my weight, is happening. 
and make sure that right hand is rubbing left and left right or both. And then we go up the forearm and up onto the shoulder and back down the arm. So with your eyes closed, notice the differences, the bony hand, bony but incredibly fluid if you, if you let your hands touch each other. And then we have the long bones of the forearm and these, these muscles here just after the elbow, the muscles that pronate and supinate the forearm, they do this gesture. And then, and then we have the dip of the elbow and the boniness of the olecranon, and then the muscles of the biceps and triceps. One you will notice is always bunchy, the biceps, and one is always floppy, the triceps. And that's because they, they fuel differently on sugar and oxygen, and one of them keeps tone. It's a tonic muscle like our quads, and the other one does not keep tone. So here we go up onto the shoulder, around the shoulder blade. The back, where the shoulder blade is, there is a spine, the spine of the shoulder blade. See if you can find, find it. It's like, it's not a point, it's a long line. I'm showing you on the camera if your eyes are closed. Long line. And then, then we have the big bunch of the tra trapezius. And then when you come around the front, you have the collarbone or the clavicles, this beautiful necklace of bone, which is very, very mobile and very kind of bendy and twangy, but also breakable. And then we have this joint here. If you, if you feel along your clavicles and you come to the middle where the breastbone is and you play with your fingers, very often there's a tiny little bump there's a little bump, and that's where the clavicle comes in and makes a joint with the breastbone, and the clavicles can rotate, can come away from the front, can come back a little, can come up and can come down. So it's quite a sophisticated movement. And in a moment when we put our weight on our arms, we, you know, these joints, when we put weight, when we allow the weight to flow through, Joints come alive, these spaces, these articulations. One bone pushes against the other, and there's a kind of a squelch and a deliciousness, like when you walk on a rich forest floor and you can feel you're sinking through the leaves and the moss, you know, and then the earth springs back at you. It's the same everywhere. This, this image we have of a bony, hard, body that gets stuck all the time. It's a pity because it's not. It's mostly water. Then we come down the front and we have the breastbone. The breastbone, just stick your fingers. And then we have all these ribs that go around. So do whatever you can with your hands touching. And when we come round to the back, we have the spine and you can feel with your thumbs or your fingers or your knuckles you can feel where the bony bits of the vertebra, the spinous processes stick out. And then these big columns, sausages or columns of tofu, if you're a vegetarian, up and down the sides here. Powerful, powerful muscles also that keep tone all the time. They're always on because they're always holding me up in my world. There we go. Let's do that again. Hands, forearms, elbow. Let's look this time. Maybe stand or kneel and be in a different position. Armpit, shoulder, the back, the front, shoulder, the back, the front. And let's just feel the neck, the neck, and then bring your hands over the jaw, the jaw and the face and come up to the hair and just pull yourself up with your hands, pull, pull. Pulling your own hair is also very helpful for world peace. Not as helpful as relaxing the anus, but it's very helpful. 
So just go right over your paw and then take your cheeks, take your cheeks and squeeze. If you always wanted to be an Italian, this is this is how you get your Italian passport. You squeeze your cheeks. Squeeze. Great. Clavicle, breastbone, really rake down with your fingers onto the bone. Many of us are way too folded forward for too long, you know, and this tissue gets so tight, especially at the back of the breastbone. There's muscular fibers of an amazingly asymmetrical muscle complex called the transversus torridus behind the breastbone. It's all kind of like a firm. You want to just put your fingers there and then we rake around on the ribs and we feel the spine scratch. Wonderful. Okay. So, okay. So let's take our awake arms. Actually, I think I'm going to put this diagonal. Let's see how that works. Let's take our awake hands and arms and put your hands on the floor and just begin to pour your weight over your hands. Yeah. So of course your yoga practice could begin lying on the floor, very quiet and still. But if you find that you become addicted to that and that's a habit, it's good to do something, you know, to start differently. Feel the weight coming through the heel of the hands. And as you come forward, pouring out over the fingers. Yeah, and then we're just gonna bend the right hand at the fingers. We're gonna bend up, just bending up, and just let your weight pour down onto the heel of your fingers. And we can just touch, if you just touch through with your hand and come down with your fingers like I'm doing and press on those joints. Since probably you've never ever done this and no one's ever done this to you, it will be surprising, but it's wonderful to wake up these joints so much of the time we're this way with our hands. So we're just taking the hand in the opposite direction. Yeah. And then you can bring your fingers through. My left hand comes through. I bend my fingers and I hook mercilessly into that webbing, right where the mass of the hand and the fingers seem to come out. And I pull on it and it'll feel nervy and you can scratch up and down. Yeah. Great. And then the left hand bending. Yeah, exploring, exploring the bend. Yeah, that's it. And then slowly I can feel this, I dislocated this finger a long time ago. So this hand bends more slowly. Yeah, but eventually that's it. Eventually I can really feel that I'm up on the high heel of my hand and I can press down into this joint, these joints. Wonderful. And I go through and I hook and I bend and pull and scratch and dig. Yeah. Wonderful. So you know how we've been spending time developing the head direction by imagining at neural antlers and then moving the head from there in the tail direction by having a squirrel's tail or a wolf's tail. Well, what happens when we do that, rather than thinking, imagining my spine and shaping it, because shaping has a very short shelf life, whereas orienting endlessly opens the body in ways that we 
can't imagine and that usually surprise us. So when your beloved comes around the corner at the airport, you're not shaping yourself into the embrace. They come around the corner and it's like, ah, like that. I mean, you, your body orients itself. So in yoga, if you're always shaping, mm, not so great for the long term, because probably you're just tightening. Whereas if you're orienting and opening your imagination and playing, and then there's a little bit of shaping, especially where over time you discover that there's a problem. That's very different. Well, it's the same. So if we're going to play with this pathway, then I don't want to get caught up in the shape of this, but rather in the wakefulness of these palpatory miracles called hands here and how the hand gives life to the shoulder or how the spine gives life to the shoulder and so to the hand. So when I go to shake your hand, I'm not shaping the shake. I'm with me, I sense myself, and then my hand comes out and I agree with the contract we're about to sign or I'm a little bit hesitant or I'm trying to dominate or whatever, but it's coming out through the relationship. Yeah, so here we are. So let's continue waking up the hand. So we're just going to bend over onto the back of the wrist. Play with feeling the weight going down onto this mass of bones and the big radial bone, this radiocarpal articulation here like that. And just feeling and playing. You can, and then you can come up onto the knuckles and back down onto the back of the hand, or you can roll all the way through. Yeah. Just the sense of weight and the playfulness, feeling the yoga mat, yeah, or doing it on the carpet. Yeah. Once again, on the back of the hand, we just let the elbow bend. Playing with the weight, sometimes looking, sometimes not looking. Wonderful. Okay. Let's take a moment to see, to sense what's changing. The breath. Where am I in the space? So I'm you know, a kind of, well, you may not know, but I mean, my tendency in gravity is to accelerate rather than hang back or someone who goes like that. And so then I start teaching and I notice, but after just this little bit, I can feel that I'm much more with my spine and, and something is slowing down. And so the world is much deeper. So it's not all about things in my face, it's much deeper. Um, and we're all very different that way, but it's a beautiful thing to notice and to get to know your habit. Because to be a swallow is wonderful, to be more of a bear or a sloth or a tortoise or to be a giraffe. You know, these are all wonderful ways in which we use our physicality to build a world around us and to relate. Some of us zoom towards each other, some of us wait back, some of us are more in our heels, some of us are more spreading wings. Yeah, so just noticing where you are, and what's changing. Okay. So we're going to <clears throat> palms up. If you do lots of yoga and you're used to doing elbow dog with your hands down, that's fine. We'll go there in a minute, but we're just going to let ourselves. Yeah. We're just going to let the elbow have a moment to reach the ground. So you'll notice that, especially if you're quite bunchy like me up here, if you immediately try to go palms down, you've actually rolled the pointy bit, your olecranon away from the ground and you may not feel it so much. But if you kind of go somewhere from palms up to thumb up, somewhere in there, you are more likely to feel, to really feel the heel of your forearm, your elbow. 
And if you lift your forearms, you can feel that the carpet is soft enough. Lift and really let the weight drop down into the elbow. Down into the elbow. Wonderful. And I'm slowly, as I settle and explore, I'm letting my weight move a little from side to side. All these little movements help you to move towards nearness and away from looking at. Because all of these little movements, which would take volumes to write down and describe, pour you into the proprioceptive river of what you're up to. Whereas getting very still and holding and shaping, it takes you away from that. And before you know it, you're holding your breath and then you're wondering and then you want to go look in the mirror, which is wonderful. Sometimes you have a look, you know, you have a look or you, you shape it a bit so you get the basic understanding. But then the body is much more complex and asymmetrical and organic and curvy. Yeah. Okay, so curl your toes under and we'll do where we went yesterday. I'm just going to lean back into my bum. We're not going all the way back into child pose but I'm, and I'm not palms down, even if it's very easy for you. I'm going to lean back. I'm just going to allow my forehead to come towards the floor. If, um, if at any time something is straining, put, do something to, so that you have an adaptation. I'm just going to put my forehead on something a little bit higher. And if your shoulders are bothering you, widen your arms like I've just done. If they're very bad, you can tuck one under. So you don't want to exacerbate any kind of discomfort in the shoulder. And just resting, resting, resting. Toes tucked under. And then we're going to come back forward again, just letting the weight move over the elbows. Okay. And then one arm at a time. So let's do the right arm first. Here I am resting on my elbow. And I'm, I'm going to really rest here. You can even put your hand there if it's helpful. I'm really going to rest on my elbow. And then I'm going to just let my arm roll around over my baby finger. Yeah, take your time. The toes are, are helpful if, if every now and again, if you feel like you just need a little bit of a push to keep you on your elbow. So I roll this way. <clears throat> My palm is up and I roll this way and my palm starts to go down. And this is more of a challenge for the arm because the, this bone here, the radial bone, is, is now kind of crossing over this long bone here, the ulna. The radial bone is, is bended so that it can do that. It can do that. And here we have a little square of stabilizing muscle very deep in the arm. And that's very often holding these bones close together and supporting movement that's coming out to one of the most mobile bones in the body, the radiocarpal bone between the long bones and the bones of the hand. So very often you're trying to do something, but you can see I'm like that because I work a lot with my hands. So you know, I'm actually tightening. And what I want to do is I want to rest on this long bone and just let this flop over. And then I can move my weight around over my elbow as I just play with this movement of the forearm. It's like I'm letting the forearm untangle, untangle. Yeah, in Asian theater, so much is said by the movement of a hand. 
And also in Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, you go look at the painting, all of the apostles have their hands in different variations of this. So elbow and then unwinding and then floppy and breath and then just coming away for a moment, just come back and just notice the difference or whatever is going on from side to side. You know, this arm, this shoulder, this spine to shoulder to arm to hand where you've just been resting, what's happening there? Of course, we were talking about the forearm, but when you do what we just did, you're resting into the shoulder joint, which is never by itself. There's all this tissue underneath and armpit and then all around the rib cage and then inside the lung and all of these suspensory um, pressure systems inside. So just taking that in. Yeah, I feel like my I feel like the heel of my hand is much closer to the ground on the right than the left. <clears throat> right, so we go to the other side. So don't repeat because it's completely different. It's the other side. The other side is never the same as the first side. So you don't know how many sides you have. You don't have two sides. It's many, 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 many sides. So I'm moving to get the feeling of my weight on the elbow. And I don't know, maybe because I'm right-handed or the way my spine is, but I've never noticed this before, but I'm less, I'm less on my left elbow. So just moving, moving moving, breathing, letting the weight of my body move there. So I'm much more rooted. And then I just let my arm move around the baby finger line. And that way, you know, Sometimes you, you notice, oh, that's so interesting how that little piece is short or collapsed, or there's a sharp sensation. Very good. Okay, so I have both, I have both forearms. I curl my toes under. And now I'm going to reach back into my bum like we've done lots of times and my squirrel's tail is opening up, my toes are bent, and then I'm just going to allow my palms to turn towards the floor. Don't rush so that you don't take your, you don't uproot your elbows, take your time. Our forearms do not need to be parallel. And then we're just gonna float up onto those elbows, knees coming off the floor, legs quite bent. Yeah. And come back down. Come back down and just feel. Oh. Oh. Wonderful. How's everyone doing? Okay. So you can kneel, you can sit, you can stand, you can move around. It's really up to you. What we're going to do now is just let the right arm float up. We'll involve the whole spine in a minute. I just want to do a little bit for the shoulder, just a tiny bit. So the right arm floats up. And of course, in yoga, what's, what's wonderful about the, the ideas behind yoga is that there's always pose and counterpose, as if they knew what contemporary movement science was going to be discovering, you know, that we're always, the body is always doing this, always. It's doing it in a joint, but it's doing it in the bigger systems. And it's got nothing to do with me doing it, you know, straightening my neck and having good 
No, it's just always, I'm always standing there and smelling the cake that's coming out of the oven, or I'm standing there and the wind is driving, or something is pushing me from behind. So we're always moving, moving, not just mechanical movement, we're always separating and uniting, except the breath is also always doing that, expanding and closing. So as the arm goes up, I can feel my tail go down and feel that I'm resting on my legs. It goes up and it bends and I put my hand on top of my elbow and then I, I start to move it, but you can see, so I'm a bit short on the front here. You might be on the back or like me or whatever, but as I move my elbow in the beginning, my whole, the whole thing moves of a piece, which is okay, but we wanna create a bit of separation between ribs and arms. Yeah, so we want the ribs and the arms not to be so codependent. So what I do is I just feel a bit of weight. Don't tuck in, don't hold. I just let myself feel heavy. And I just, there, that's already, because I just gave the message to be heavy, so to be unlocked. And then it's easier for me to move my arm without the whole thing following. Yeah. Or you can put your hand on your chest and move your arm just to get that message. You don't need to make it, yeah. And go as far as it goes and have fun right behind the head. Yeah. That's it. And then we're just gonna bend forward, bend forward. And back to my roots and bending back. So this is not about me watching my spine bend, but letting my breastbone look at the sky as I feel the weight of my bum on my heels. And my arm is moving and I'm making other little movements and then I let go. <sighs> wow. And then just feel, feel what's going on. <clears throat> so, Healthy heart, lots of things bring a healthy heart. <clears throat> and one of them is moving the arm in relation to the rib cage enough so that you actually open the inner space of the chest, the endothoracic or endopleural space, that you know that there is an opening so that the movement of my arm is actually moving this inner pressure system of heart sitting on diaphragm with this lovely structure where vessels can pass on either side of it and behind. Yeah. So let's do the other side, letting that image be. So it's not just about the shoulder, it's about the arm going up and then not everything being bound, but arm going up, yeah. The other day I'd been at the computer a really long time and then I practiced and I could literally feel that I was short from my groins all the way into my chest and into my arms. And it took a while to just let go. Then my lower back was achy for a bit and then it all settled down and I was more open. So here we are, arm goes up, hands supporting the chest, if that's possible. Any, any spontaneous movement you want to do is fine. That's it. Come back to the sense of weight, the sense of wing. The arm bends at the elbow, and then I'm off. Off, yeah. So the range and the ease is different. It's curious. It seems less. Something about what I was feeling in the elbow, maybe. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm just going to bend forward. And come back up. And back. And come up there. Coming back to the sense of weight and being near. Okay, so let's come 
let's connect all of this to something bigger as we did yesterday. Curl your toes under, you're on your hands. And we're just gonna let the spine, the torso drop between your hands and legs. Toes bent under, tail going up, antlers going up. <coughs> let your mouth be open. Let your tongue hang out. Great. And then pushing from the hands and the knees and something is getting hold of your back and the whole thing is flying up, but it's kind of being flown by the sky. So you don't need to work too hard in the belly, but you could, you could pull the belly in, but that's not the only way to move. You can move by dropping the antlers or dropping the tail letting the spines of your vertebrae go flying up into the sky and then the belly wall or the belly organs are heavy and the vertebrae are heavy and the muscles of your back are heavy and everything is hanging down. And then air is pushing up against the belly and you start to go the other way and the head is heavy and the tail is heavy. Wonderful. And I'm going to reach back into my sit bones and we're going to do this thing that we've often done in class with the tail up. This is a foundational movement, I think, as important as dog pose. Very important to help you begin to move this area here. So I don't want you to go too far back so that your sit bones are tucking under. I want you to have the feeling of a squirrel's tail going up. So don't, don't lean, don't go into child pose and don't be 90 degrees with your upper leg. Lean into your bone. So this is leaning backwards. This is opening. Yeah, so, so just let your, just let your, as you lean back, let your spine hang off. I've turned my head to the side just for the microphone. So you can be face down or turn to the side. And again, we're just letting these arms pour out. Wonderful. And now we're going to go from that position. We're going to go up. So here you're way down here and you're just going to let your tail start to take you up on your elbows. If this is uncomfortable, don't do it. Just wait for the next move. Going to go, my elbows were a bit wide. We're going to go up. You want to really rest on your elbows and up on the bend of the toes, the way we bent the fingers earlier in the class, and wait for the back line of the leg to open. It doesn't open on command. It takes time. You have to really imagine your tail. It's, it's so we think we can shape the hamstrings, but you can't. Or the, the, these, the soleus or the gastro back there, you can't, they, they have a particular way of being in tone, which is linked to how we feel in the world. It's not linked to a kind of bodybuilding thing. It's not like the, the quads on the front. So wait for your tail to be met by the angels who are bringing ambrosia. Your tail has hundreds of mouths. And now that you're eating the ambrosia, if this mixed metaphor works for you, if not, you have to do something else. Then the back line of the leg gets longer and longer and longer. And make a huh sound. Huh. 
Line, line from the tail. One oh, and then coming down and coming undone. And just let yourself fold into child pose. You can widen the legs like I've done or keep them together or do a little bit of each. And just let yourself rest. Just resting, resting in child pose, folded. In your sense of weight. On the floor. <clears throat> okay. Let's just take a moment to integrate some of the, the, the depth of what we were doing. So you're going to lie on your back with your arms wide. Don't line yourself too much. That's good. Just roll yourself out on the floor and give yourself a moment just to feel where you are. Let's be with the legs bent if that's comfortable for you. Wow, so I can feel what I've been undoing and connecting in the upper body. It's changed the tone of my jaw. I can feel my head wants to kind of roll to the right quite a lot. So just letting that be. And let's allow the arms to be open wide. Palms up. And um, what, uh, what would be not so helpful would be as you, as you do that and you hang out there is to just go into your arms now. So, Stay also with the sense of your feet on the ground and your long tail at the base of the spine going out on the floor. And the whole river of the spine and the weight of the torso, the weight of the arms, uh, sorry, the weight of the organs on the long, long arm of the spine and then the head and the antlers. We can just wobble the head a little. Okay, so you, you may need to take a look. I know you're lying on your back, but I'm just going to bend my, at my wrist, I'm going to just let the palm and the fingers come up. Um, that's it. And I'm going to let go. And then I'm going to bend again, letting the arm be heavy. And now I'm going to let the fingertips grow. So the same movement happens. But instead of bending at the wrist, I'm actually letting the fingertips grow up. And then the forearm and it goes up and the elbow is rooting. And rest into the elbow while the fingers are winging their way to the sky. 
and then the whole arm flies up, but the shoulder blades are very rooted. I can literally feel them moving around in there. And the arms, as they float and fly, as the shoulder blades do their rooting, the arms can begin to turn on their own axis or move towards each other and move away from each other. Yeah, just letting these movements happen. You see, I've bended my arm a bit and then they get straight and then I bend at the wrist. Yeah, so you can let your arms the more you root through the elbow and spine and the more the skin of the arm can fly, the more you let your arms just move around the room. Don't get caught up in the shapes and the shaping. You have roots and wings. These are your arms are two carrots. Dancing, dancing. Yeah, and then they fall to the ground. Fall to the ground. And we just let the arms go across the chest. And as they go across, you hook, you can see me doing it here, you hook if, if you can reach it, your shoulder blade with one hand, your shoulder blade with the other hand. And we're just gonna roll over the spine Use your feet to support you and you can let the head come up. You can see my voice hasn't changed. So I'm not squeezing somewhere to lift my head. My head just comes up and I'm just as if I was lying on the floor and I'm rolling over my spine and then my tail comes up. So my tail is up and my head is up. This kind of movement can give you cramps in your hamstrings. So. Rejoice if that happens, although well, it's horrible. And then we drop the tail and we drop the head. And change arms. Again, hooking around the ribs and then rolling on the spine as the head comes up. But don't tuck your chin in, that does not help the head to come up. There's structures on the front of the neck that support the head to come up and the tail comes up. This is called the unknown yoga pose because it doesn't exist. And that's marvelous. And then drop head, tail and arms. Drop, drop, drop. And let the legs straighten out, just hang out. Hang out for a bit, however you like. If it's not comfortable with legs straight, you can bend them again. Letting those palms and fingers breathe and letting them be long, 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 all the way into the spine. Lots of length through the legs, just resting and noticing. Resting and noticing. Okay. So, um, let's see. I think I'll show it from the back. If you've if we've been in class together before, you will have done this. This is the traditional arms of cow pose. This one where the one arm goes up and the other one comes down the back and they connect, okay? That's cow arms. I think for me, it's always because these are the long horns of the cow and this is the long face of the cow lying on the, lying on the, side of the street in India, but we're going to do it lying down. So you could be on your right or your left side. If you have a troubled shoulder, do the other side first or elbow. And uh, so I'm lying on my right arm and I'm going to bend at my right elbow, let the arm bend <coughs> and the hand 
comes around the back of the head. And then my other arm comes down the side of my body. And it goes around the back. And just before you get caught up in the drama of wondering if your hands are going to connect, forget about all of that and really feel that you're lying on the right side of your body, kind of luxurious. You know, this is definitely a poolside margarita Madagascar moment. And who cares about whether you can do cow arms? I mean, it sounds even stupid. So your arms go around the back, but you're really lying on your right side. So your body doesn't just charge around into making and shaping the movement. You have roots. I'm even rocking a little bit on my right side. It's very nice on my lower back. I can feel my legs with these things. And then, of course, you the arm goes back. Now, if you want to, you can look at the camera. Um, in order for the hand to go up, we don't want to pull the shoulder back. The more you pull the shoulder back, the less up you can go. You actually want to relax the shoulder, um, the, the joint here, the, where the shoulder blade meets the humerus, this glenohumeral joint, this amazing ball and socket. You want it to fold forward. The more you relax it, maybe I should do it like this. The more you, you relax, the more you pull it back, the less you can do. And also the more likely you are to irritate this joint. But the more you let it hang forward and then explore, the more wonderful it is, because this is completely understandable to your arm. So actually, I just was hanging on my shoulder. You might want to do something like that. It's, it's actually helpful. So it's like this. It's like this, and that comes up. And then you may reach over and connect. And if you don't connect, you can use something like this. A sock or a sweater, <coughs> your, your yoga belt. And then you, what you do is you just walk along, walk along the material that's there. And then keep letting that shoulder drop forward and so on. So that's what we're doing. You connect. Doesn't matter if your arm's all the way down there, that's fine. It's fine. You just do what feels right. You connect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly roll over onto our backs. Don't worry. You can use your foot to support you like this, like I'm doing. And then we're just going to roll over onto the hand. Yeah, this is the marvelous moment where the bunched up hand pushes into the ribs and the spine. And it looks like you are never going to do yoga again because you're completely stuck and you're failing your yoga exam. But it's marvelous. Well, don't keep going. That would not be great for the shoulder at all. Don't go so far that you feel it pulling. Right, and then we roll, and then we roll back. And this time we roll forward onto the front, still holding. And you'll notice that this time the shoulder of the hand that's gone behind the arm, that shoulder is going to be dropping to the floor, dropping to the floor, and just let yourself in. I didn't stop long enough on my back, but you, you can just stop, let the weight press down on your neck and your shoulder and arms and ribs. And you have to come back, you have to come back the way you went. So back and you untangle and just lie on your back for a minute. <coughs> just lie, just let things be.
the freedom and the health of your, I can just feel what I'm saying is just coming from something I'm sensing. The freedom of the shoulder girdle, the shoulder structure is not dependent on the little things around it only, very much dependent on the life of the hand and the sense that you have of being able to reach out into the world, but also from the mobility of the organs underneath it. So very often, you can even have a urogenital infection and it can pull, it can all the way up into the shoulder and restrict its movement. But certainly if you've got, you know, there's inability to move in here at the level of the lung or the liver or the fermenting tract, you, these pulls will travel up. And so now that we've been doing that, I can feel, I feel much longer into my into my stomach to hear where my two pipes come down and one of them comes into this valve called the cardia and then into the stomach space into here it's like it's like there's room from ooh, room from hand to stomach see this is perfect for getting ready for dinner <laughs> I'm gonna go on to the other side so left arm or other arm rolling onto your side really let your body really let your body be on its side bending at the elbow and then the other arm goes up the back Oh yeah, yeah, I'd forgotten. Very different on this side. Very, very different. Yeah. So connecting and then slowly, don't pull the shoulder back. Slowly rolling onto the back. Yeah, just let things. Here you can let the shoulder sag towards the floor, but don't pull it back. That's wonderful. Just wobbling around on your hand and remembering to have a quiet moment here. Legs bent, legs straight. Oh, letting your body remap unknown territory. Just let my tail come up and down, my feet are awake, wonderful, beautiful. And then I'm just gonna roll through and around and back and all the way to the front. And just rest. The breath, the length of the legs, the weight of the torso on the ground. And coming undone whenever, you can come all the way back onto your side. Come on in breath. And again, just lying on your back. I've traveled a lot here. Oh. Let's just be heavy. Let's just be heavy on our backs <clears throat> and just allow <coughs> allow the head to be heavy as it wobbles. Let's just take the movement up into the throat. And we're just going to let the tail float up. So the spine is going up at the tail as you roll up onto the higher ribs. And we're just going to slide the arms headward. Yeah, don't struggle, don't try too hard. And um, there are lots of different arm positions for this in yoga. This is called Setu Bandhasana. Hat, hands very soft, feet very awake, high up on the ribs. But when we bring the arms head height, we go very high onto the ribs and we really wake up the neck 
bones. And then we're just going to come back down from the tail. So vertebra by vertebra, from the highest ones all the way through the first and second rib, down through, yeah, and letting the arms wide and listening to how your body wants to come into length, but also to come into connectedness. It's not just about pulling things apart. It's also about letting things have continuity. Continuity, that's what the fascial web of the body, long planes of collagenous stuff full of mechanoceptors, they help the body make space, things being pulled apart, but they also help the body have continuity continuity. So I can feel I'm rolling down through my root vertebrae and down to my tail and it's all continuous. One more time before we close, tail going up, roll. Your spine is not a plank, it's a river, it's a sunflower, it's the neck of a giraffe, it's a blade of grass. It's the wind, it's a wave in the ocean. Very heavy arms. Remember the first things we did, the whole glove of the forearm. As the tail takes you up, the arms are just resting in the ground. And as you come back down, don't take your arms back. You gave your arms away to the world. Let them float away. And eventually you come down, resting and breathing. You can stay up there, you can bring the arms down, you can put your hands on your belly or ribs, whatever you like. Receiving the breath. Receiving the weight, dropping away from the front of your face. Sorry. So thank you, everyone. Wish you a lovely closure to your session and a wonderful week. And see you next week. Bye bye.